In this video we'll examine how to use a small PIR sensor, just like the one shown here, to build a motion sensor circuit. Welcome, to Electronics for Absolute Beginners. What is a PIR motion sensor, and how does it work? Every object that has a temperature above absolute zero, emits some heat energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. The hotter the object, the more radiation it emits. This is invisible to the naked eye because it radiates at infrared wavelengths, which we can't see, but it can be detected by purpose-built electronic devices. So, if an object passes in front of one of these devices, the device is able to identify that there has been a change in the radiation detected. A passive infrared, or PIR, sensor, is such a device, and is able to detect movement that takes place within a certain range of the sensor, typically within a few meters. A PIR sensor consists of two main parts, a pyroelectrical sensor and a Fresnel lens, which is a special type of lens that focuses infrared signals onto the sensor. The pyroelectrical sensor has two rectangular slots in it, which allow infrared radiation to pass through. Behind each slot is an infrared sensor electrode, one electrode produces a positive output, and one produces a negative output. The way that the electrodes are wired up is such that they cancel each other out. If one electrode detects more or less infrared radiation than the other, which is what happens when an object passes through the detection area, the output signal swings either high or low. When there is no movement, the same amount of infrared radiation passes through both slots, and there is no output signal. The image on the right shows what the output signal looks like when an object passes through the detection area. Initially, when the object passes through area A, the signal swings high, and when it passes through area B, it swings low. This change in signal can then be used by the circuitry in the rest of the PIR's electronics to generate a square wave output signal on the output pin of the sensor. Before we build our first motion sensor circuit, let's take a quick look at the mini PIR motion sensor we will be using. As you can see, the motion sensor has a dome-shaped top area, which is the Fresnel lens and sensor assembly, a small circuit board, and three pins so you can easily connect it to a breadboard. The pins are ground, which needs to be connected to the negative battery terminal, output, which provides a 3.3 volt output voltage, supply, or voltage in, which needs to be connected to a supply voltage of between 3 volts and 12 volts DC. Just where the pins are connected to the circuit board, there are indicators to tell you which pin is which. The output from the sensor is the middle pin, which is easy to remember. But it's very easy to get the positive and negative pins mixed up. If you do connect the positive and negative pins the wrong way around in your circuit, the sensor should, hopefully, be okay, but the circuit won't work. Check what supply voltage is required for your sensor, and choose an appropriately sized battery. Here is the first circuit we are going to look at. As you can see, it is a very basic circuit which comprises the following components. A 9 volt battery supply, although this could be anywhere in the range 3 to 12 volts. An LED. It doesn't matter what color, so whatever you have to hand will do. And the PIR sensor itself. You'll notice that I've indicated that you may need to use a current limiting resistor in between the output from the sensor and the LED. If you look at similar circuits on the internet, you'll most likely see a resistor used. However, I found that with my sensor, the output current was only a few milliamps, so there was no need to use a resistor. If you're not sure whether you need one or not, it's best to play it safe and use one. Maybe just something around 82.5 ohms should be sufficient, as the output voltage from the sensor is only just over 3 volts anyway. Using a breadboard, build the circuit shown here. As mentioned earlier, if your PIR sensor requires the use of a resistor in between the output pin and the LED, then include one. If it turns out later that you don't need a resistor, you can always remove it and replace it with a jumper wire. Once you have built the circuit, and applied power to it, wait about 30 to 60 seconds to allow the PIR to stabilize. Next, wave your hand around in close proximity to the sensor. If everything is working correctly, the LED should become illuminated while your hand is moving, and remain so for a period of a few seconds afterwards. Depending on the model of sensor you are using, you may well be able to adjust the length of time the LED remains illuminated. With mine, unfortunately, it's a fixed length of about 2 seconds, as can be seen on this oscilloscope trace.
In the circuit we just built, we established that trying to drive an LED directly from the output of the PIR sensor wasn't very successful. The circuit we are going to design and build now, takes a different approach, and uses the PIR output to switch a transistor on and off, which in turn controls whether or not two LEDs, connected in series, are illuminated. So, here is the schematic for the second circuit. As you can see, there is a lot of information on the drawing. I have included all of the voltage drops from around the circuit. I won't go through all the figures, but if you are interested in studying them further, I suggest pausing the video while you examine them. So here is the circuit built on a breadboard. In addition to the PIR sensor, we have two resistors, R1 and R2, two LEDs, I've used 10mm white LEDs, but you can use whatever you have to hand, finally, we have a transistor. R1, which is used to protect the two LEDs is 82.5 ohms. R2 is used to limit the flow of current to the transistor. I use a 14.7 kilo ohm resistor, but you could use something considerably bigger, or smaller, if you want to, anything in the range 470 ohm to about 75 kilo ohm will probably do. In fact, when I was developing the circuit, I initially didn't use a resistor for this part of the circuit, and the transistor was perfectly happy. We need one NPN transistor. I use a BC547, but you could probably get away with any general purpose NPN transistor, for example, BC337, BC517, BC548, BC549 or BC550, are probably all suitable, although I have to admit that I haven't checked the specifications for them. As with the first circuit we built, once you have applied power, wait for 30 seconds or so to allow the PIR sensor to stabilize before waving your hand around in close proximity to it. If there are no problems with the circuit, the two LEDs should become illuminated. Hopefully this time though, they are bright enough to be useful. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And why not subscribe to our channel to see the other electronics videos we have.